Hello, this is Frank Mealy from HeartlandDiaryUSA.com, bringing you news every conservative can use. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay up to date. You're about to hear Chris Matthews interview Peggy Noonan on MSNBC about the matter of witnesses in the Senate trial of, Senate, of uh, President Trump. Noonan seems to think that the matter of witnesses can be handled in a, in a few days, and she subscribes to the theory that the best selection of witnesses would be three members of the administration and Vice President Joe Biden. She says that this could all happen in four days and wouldn't elongate the process. That's absurd. And the fact of the matter is Vice President Biden probably doesn't want to testify. Certainly the, the President of the United States would invoke executive privilege for any witnesses that were called from his administration. And uh, uh, Peggy Noonan basically makes an ass of herself here, but that's not anything new, is it? Uh, Peggy, you, you wrote a fascinating column that's coming out tomorrow, but you've already posted it. You want four witnesses. Tell me why. Which uh, ones? Look, take four days. The idea that you shouldn't elongate this thing weeks and months, of course. We have a, an election coming in 10 months. However, take four days, have four witnesses. Who should they be? Three big fact witnesses, Mick Mulvaney, John Bolton, Rudy Giuliani, and somebody else. Maybe uh, not a fact witness, not involved in this crazy scheme, in fact, the victim of it, but Joe Biden, a longtime government official, a man of poise. He knows the US Senate, he was there for 36 years. Let him come forward and answer questions that the Republicans might have about Ukraine, about the familial drama, about the whole thing, let it go. My feeling is be generous to history. Give it the information it needs. It's hungry for data. It wants to know the entire story. For the Democrats, witnesses would lift this whole proceeding into a new level. For the Republicans, not only being generous to history, but I, I have to say, it, it's almost impossible to think the president is going to be convicted by with the needed 67 votes in the Republican Senate. So the Republicans feel they're going to win. Therefore, A, be generous and gracious about it, but B, give some cover to your own senators who are running for re-election, who don't want to be tainted with the stigma of, sure, you won, but you won by not letting anybody come in and talk. Let everybody come in and talk. Let the whole thing, let it all hit the wall. My feeling is go for it, then end this thing in the way that I think we all know it is going to end. And politically, just the last point, which grabbed me, which was you believe that if Joe Biden, well, he'd take a risk, of course, but he could win the presidency on this, or the, certainly the nomination if he is a starring witness. It's a real opportunity, oddly enough. It is high risk, high reward. Joe Biden showed up and in a day of testimony and Q&A, if he showed up and bobbled it or seemed not equal to the moment or not to be able to answer the questions, that would be very bad for him. But if he shows up and he brings it uh, to President Trump and he accuses him of abusing American civil servants <clears throat> who were just trying to do their jobs but weren't in on this scheme and so they had to be crushed like the U.S. ambassador to the Ukraine. If he makes a case, if he is stirring, wow, he could make himself president that day. So it's very high risk, high reward, but heck, he's okay. in politics. Go for it.